Hi, I'm Eric Kelly from kellyplanet.com. This is a closer look at Star Trek The Next Generation, Season 4, Episode 5, Remember Me. We are docking at Starbase 133 for scheduled crew rotation. I look forward to welcoming aboard my mentor and dear friend, Dr. Dalen Quace, who will be traveling with us to his home planet, Kenda 2. Holy gorgeous exterior shots, Batman, though we saw those shots in Season 1. There's Dalen Quace, played by Bill Irwin. He's been on tons of TV shows, but I remember him as the old husband from the airport and home alone who gave up his tickets to, I think it was Scranton, uh, to Kevin's mom. <laughs> oh, all right. Hey, there's Cole Meany. Dr. Quace is retiring because his wife recently passed away, and if you notice, their uniforms are slightly different. Oh, I'm sorry. There's no reason to load all this uh, emotional baggage on you. I usually travel light. Wesley's messing with something in engineering, and Geordi says, Time's up, dude. I want my warp engines back now. Oh, there's his mom. Wesley is experimenting with new warp fields, and that's probably going to be a thing. <laughs> yep, see, what was that? He doesn't know, but the computer says things are fine. It's time to leave the Starbase. Uh, where did uh, that go? Haha, <laughs> that looks great. Oh, there she is. She's going to visit Dr. Quace, but he isn't home. Dalen, it's Beverly. Computer. Current location of Dr. Dalen Quace. There is no Dr. Dalen Quace aboard the Enterprise. Yeah, that's odd. Bev tells Worf that Quace is missing, and he's like, um, I've never heard of him. Bev can't find him or any of his things. Worf asks the computer, and it tells him the same thing it told Bev. She's concerned he may have fallen and can't get up, so Worf says, ah, don't worry, I'll have my security guys go look for him. Sir, I have several teams conducting a deck-by-deck -deck search. It is not yet complete. I have scanned the entire ship, Captain. Other than the Enterprise's regular complement, I could find no one else on board. Your sensors wouldn't detect him if he were dead. Picard surmises that perhaps he returned to the Starbase, and that's possible. So he says, yeah, go check that out, so off they go. Hold up, Doc. Apparently Picard was not informed that Quace was coming aboard either. Perhaps he made some enemies. Sir, Starbase 133 has no record at all of a Dr. Dalen Quace. Who said he was stationed there for six years? Not according to their computer. I have also accessed Starfleet records. There is no doctor currently serving in Starfleet named Quace. Data says, in fact, I can find no record that he ever existed, and Bev's like, what? I've known that guy for 15 years. Worf shows up and says, yeah, we can't find him anywhere on the ship. Bev says, come on, I talked to the guy myself, so they go ask O'Brien, but he doesn't recall being on board. He remembers Beverly stopping by, but she was alone. Uh, what, was he invisible? Did I carry on a conversation with thin air? <sighs> no, Doctor. As I recall, you came in and you looked around for a few moments. I asked you if I could help you with anything. All you said was thank you. So we have a mystery on our hands. That's cool with me, because I've had my fill of the talky talk about feelings episodes lately. The doc is checking to make sure O'Brien's eyesight isn't failing him and calls for Doctors Hill and Salar, but they don't seem to exist either. So doctors are disappearing. Did they come on board with Dr. Quest? No. They've been on board for months. But my two duty nurses don't remember them. Their families don't even remember them. So Brian didn't remember Dr. Quace. Now we're in engineering, and this might all be Wesley's fault. He was playing with warp bubbles, and that one expanded outside the core for a moment. We saw that. Wesley says if Dr. Quace got caught in the warp bubble, it would seem as though he disappeared, but they don't know where to. And the bubble thing never left engineering, and all the people missing were other parts of the ship. Except one. Wink, wink. Picard points out that warp bubbles don't alter computer logs or erase people's memories, and he's right. So everyone is crazy except Beverly. Data says the ship's complement is 230, and that's about four times less than it should be. Picard says, I believe you, Bev, but I have to be sure. And she's like, what, that I haven't lost my mind? I already examined myself, and I'm not crazy. Maybe I'll go talk to Counselor Troy. But do me a favor and return to Starbase until we get this figured out. So he calls Riker and says, you know, make it so. The doc goes to sick bay, and <laughs> what is that? Oh, she's like in a Twilight episode or something. Then things go back to normal. That was definitely real because her wig is all disheveled. I've had a team in sick bay for two hours. We've run the mass spectrometer on all particulates. We've scanned the EM spectrum. We've even crawled around in the life support ductwork. Captain, I don't know what this vortex was that Dr. Crusher saw. She's like, dude, the vortex thing almost sucked me in. But Jory says he found no evidence that it was there or ever was. Data shows up and says the computer diagnostics come back fine, and he's called the Wellington and a Frankie vessel, and they both report no anomalies. But now the Enterprise has only 114 people aboard. There are now over 900 missing. Deck after deck of this ship is deserted now. How do you account for all the empty rooms? 
If there are only supposed to be 114 people on board, why all the extra space? The guard orders red alert and sounds general quarters. Bev asks if Worf can set up tracking on all the remaining crew, and Picard's like, uh, who? Chief of security. The big guy who never smiles. The Klingon. They don't know who she's talking about. Oh no, what about Wesley? Yeah, he's still around. She says his warp bubble thing has to be the answer, but he's like, well, I don't see how. There is one guy that knows this stuff inside and out. Remember Eric Menyuk's character from season one? We need the Traveler, and I've already sent a message out to Tau Alpha C, but that's really far away. Let's go talk to the captain, and <laughs> oh, Wesley's gone too. Holy crap, Picard's the only one on the bridge. They're all gone? Riker, Troy, Data? You know, Doctor, I have been more than fair. Picard says, we're going to be at Starbase soon. Maybe you should go and rest. I have dreams like this rather often where nothing makes any sense. And I feel like I'm the only one who knows something is wrong. I probably shouldn't admit that. Beverly says, so it's totally normal that it's just the two of us on this huge ship. And Picard says, well, yeah, we never needed anybody else before. <laughs> okay. It's not a delusion. It is not a dream. There is a physical, measurable phenomenon at work here. Perhaps you could help me to identify it. The doc wants to have the computer record Picard's vital signs until he disappears, and he's like, oh, okay, fine. And she promises she will get to the bottom of this. For quite some time, I've been meaning to say something to you. So, Luke, you and I... I won't forget any of you. I guess she's all by herself now. There's that vortex thing again, and Gates gets to do some stunt work, but the thing starts to subside, and this time it's a little different. <laughs> What's happening? I'm losing it. The link isn't holy, Commander. No. Look. <laughs> oh, Bev is stuck in the warp bubble. Not like we didn't have clues. Wesley says that this is our last shot. There is no way to get his mom back now. Just then, the Traveler shows up and says, Nothing is over. Nothing. You can't just turn it. <laughs> That's Rambo. But he does say there is still a way. Two attempts to retrieve Dr. Crusher have failed. And now... The Traveler, a mysterious visitor from our past, has reappeared. The Traveler says that Bev will remain alive as long as she thinks she is alive, and Riker says, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> I agree. This is all kind of weird, but apparently when Bev got caught in the bubble, her mind created her reality, so ultimately she's in control of it. But he has a plan. There is a power within each of us that most people haven't begun to realize. Together, we may be able to open a gateway for her but she must choose to walk through it. This sets up stuff that will come in season seven. You know, Wesley has the power. Okay, back to Beverly World, and she is going through the scientific method, and I do the same, and hits the computer with some logic loops. Basically, the rundown is, computer, am I the only crew member of the Starship Enterprise? Computer says yes. And is there only one Enterprise? And the computer says this is the fifth Starship by that name, and that's correct. And its mission is to explore the galaxy. All right. Hey, computer, am I qualified to do all that by myself? And the computer says, no. Then why am I the only crew member? Aha, uh -huh. gotcha there. That information is not available. The Traveler says they have to create a gateway to Beverly World, and Wesley says, yeah, we tried that, man, it didn't work. Traveler guy says, yeah, duh, we gotta forget all this science stuff and, you know, use the force or something. Back to Beverly, and she figures out that not only did all the people disappear, but planets and stars and stuff have too. Here's a question you shouldn't be able to answer. Computer, what is the nature of the universe? The universe is a spheroid region 705 meters in diameter. Yeah, that's not right. Hey, we're back to our awesome recycled Starbase shots, and Luke and Yoda are ready to go. But tall Yoda, I mean the Traveler, can tell the Beverly world is collapsing on itself. Well, that's not good. Beverly asked the computer to show her an image of the known universe, and then she recognizes Wesley's warp bubble. She gets it. Her universe is collapsing, and the computer says it has to seal off decks 5 through 14, which would be the deck below the main shuttle bay through just below 10 forward in the saucer, and that doesn't make any sense. Oh, the bubble's only collapsing at the front of the ship. Well, okay. If I was her, I'd head to main engineering, but she stays put for some reason. Jordy says the bubble is collapsing at 15 meters per second, and they will lose it in about four minutes, so I'm going to be a jerk and point out that the Enterprise D is nowhere near that large. What was I thinking at the moment Wesley's bubble formed? Galen Quase. He said all the people he'd known were gone. 
I thought of Jack. I went to see Wesley. That's when it started. That explains her constructed reality. Oh, now she figures she should go to engineering with 90 seconds on the clock. Yep, there's the vortex, and she jumps through it, and she's back. She says, oh, yeah, traveler guy, do I have you to thank? And he says, uh, no, passed out Wesley Skywalker there, did it? I love you, Mom. How many people are there on board? 1,040. Is there something wrong with that count, Doc? No. That's the exact number there should be. For me to discuss this episode, you have to look at season four so far. The best of both worlds was super awesome. And then we had family, followed by brothers, which I liked a lot, and then suddenly human. And all were talky talk about feelings episodes, which you probably know aren't my cup of tea. Earl Grey hot. This was also a money saving bottle episode, but I really enjoyed writing the script for this. Rick Berman thought that the dual reality concepts here might confuse the audience, but heck, come on, give us some credit. This is part two of the three show traveler character arc. The first was in season one, and the last will be in season seven. Apparently the Traveler was thrown into the story at the last minute, but I'm glad they did that and didn't try to have Wesley save his mom all by himself because that would have been even more weird. Even though this was a cost-saving story, I'm going three deltas out of five. You can let me know how you feel about that. If you liked that video, thank you. Maybe make a comment and subscribing would be cool. There's more Star Trek videos and other related content on my website. Check it out at kellyplant.com. I'm Eric Kelly. Live long and prosper.